Good morning. Hi. <laughs> Absolutely my favourite day of the year, meeting all of you, seeing all of you. I'm really glad that there's some absolute rock stars of the Online Centre Network amongst us today um, and some brand new friends. So if you haven't met me before, say hello during the day as I really want to meet you. Um, like Sue, I thought a little bit about digital, social, global and what that means for me and my life. So um, I started working in the internet and education in 1986. Um, someone said to me about 20 years after that, oh wow Helen, your career really makes sense, but I never had a career. I just went for the next thing that looked exciting and looked purposeful. So three years after that, um, Tim Berners-Lee invented the World Wide Web, probably slightly more um, impactful, only a little bit, yeah, just a switch. Um, but when Tim invented the World Wide Web, he started with some fundamental principles that it should be user-driven, it should be bottom-up, it should be non-discriminatory and it should be universal. And I think because he did that and he, he and others, uh, we should thank CERN as well, said it should be free. So what that means is the underlying code, the HTML, the HTTP, the URL is all free for the world to use. And that means there was an explosion of uses, good and bad, of uses, frivolous and purposeful, a web where everyone could really be part of it. And here's Tim just down the road in the um, Olympic Stadium in Stratford in 2012 in the opening ceremony tweeting, this is for everyone. Some of you might recognise this man. He's been in the news quite a lot in the last few days. He's Professor Philip Alston. He's the UN Special Rapporteur for Extreme Poverty. And he's been causing a bit of a stir. So he came to the UK to look at uh, the impacts of austerity, local um, cuts to local uh, councils, food banks, homelessness. And what he found shocked him. So this is a man who often goes and talks to people and looks at extreme poverty. But what he heard from the people in the UK, all, all nations in the UK, he was truly shocked by. He said he saw a lot of misery, a lot of people who feel the system is failing them. And he said that the extent of child poverty in the UK is not just a disgrace, but a social calamity and an economic disaster. I wanted to share some of uh, Philip Alston's words with you because those of you who work in communities recognise this. You know the impact of austerity and the impact of universal credit. As part of his tour, he went to um, Newcastle Library, one of the online centres in the network, and uh, two of our directors, Ros and Emma, were there to speak to the um, Special Rapports team. It wasn't all doom and gloom. There was somebody there who actually said universal credit had helped them. But what Philip Alston says was the government had vastly underestimated the impact of digital on these people and vastly underestimated the digital skills that people had to be able to use a fully online system. Lots of nodding. You know that. And also the social safety net is now beginning to be eroded, he said. And again, that's something that we've heard from you. You can follow Philip Alston on Twitter, um, and clearly he makes his political views very clear. Um, I don't know if you heard Amber Rudd this morning saying that actually they're going to do something about getting money in people's pockets as soon as they uh, register for universal credit. That is still a loan, but at least, at least the politicians are listening. If they don't listen to the UN, who are they going to listen to? So today we have our new infographic for the year, Digital Nation 2018. And the reason you're going to think, why, well, how's the link there? But we know that digital exclusion exacerbates social exclusion. We know that in the UK, people who are socially excluded are also the people who are digitally excluded. So actually, if our social safety net is eroding, what do we need to do? We need to build up that social safety net. The infographic this year has the uh, non-users and the limited users and, of course, the internet users. And one fact I just want to pull out, you have this in your pack for, to put on your walls when you get back to your offices, um, that one fact I want to pull out is that actually in those limited users, more than 60% of them are under the age of 65. Yeah? So all of those people who say this is about age, actually those people who have a tiny bit of skill 
who use it either frequently just doing Facebook on their smartphone, they absolutely don't have the skills to apply for universal credit online. So this is not something that's going to die out as the population dies out. As Ian mentioned, we're also launching today the research that we've been doing with BT and, and Professor Simeon Yates. I'm looking at those people who are the non-users of the internet and looking specifically at those who say that motivate, they don't have a motivation, that it's not for them. We've split them into these four groups. Again, you have this in your pack. It's not for me is the big one. And those of you who do this work on the ground will know and you'll hear that every day. So what we're now doing, we're now doing some primary research, we're doing interviews with some of those people who say they've never used the internet and it's not for me. Because if we're going to get to 100% digital inclusion across the UK, then we have to understand why those people are saying that they're never going to use the internet. Which is a crying shame because we know that because social and digital inclusion is so intricately linked, they're actually the way to solve many of those social challenges is to help people to use the internet to improve the human condition. And absolutely fundamental to the work of Good Things Foundation, and thank you to everybody who's here who is one of the online centres, um, or who will become one of the online centres after today, um, that you work in the heart of communities with people. I'm going to talk later about global, and you're going to hear some, a global, uh, some presentations and a panel later. But actually, everything starts with that one-on-one -on -one interaction, that personal interaction, people in the heart of communities, the communities that they live in, talking to people, being supported by people who understand them. And through digital. So I just wanted to share three of our digital platforms. Some of you will know all three of these intimately. So learn my way. Uh, we were very lucky yesterday to visit the Bromley by Bow Centre that was also featured on the Today programme this morning, which is amazing. Um, and they were saying how absolutely essential the universal credit course, the how-to course, is to them to support the people coming in. English My Way, our community-based English language program that we could scale to support more than 20,000 people to learn English language in the heart of their communities because digital is the channel by which the content is distributed, but then actually it's human-to-human -human conversation classes. I remember going to a centre in Luton based in a primary school, and one of the women in that class said that she had done something amazing that very morning. She had phoned the school to tell them that her daughter was sick and wouldn't be attending. That was amazing because it was the first time she had ever done that. It was the first time she ever felt that she had the confidence and the skills to be able to ring the school. And all the other women in the group applauded her because none of them had done it. She was the first. So that's what it means to make those small links and the Digital Health Lab is the third one. We've got big plans, big ambitions to really help the NHS to radically support people right in the communities, to make sure that digital and local people can be the mercury to drive better health prevention in every community in the country. Um, maybe I'll tell you some more about that in 12 months' time. So... Just one case study, Olivier. So Olivier um, luckily found his way to learn for life in Sheffield, um, where the rock stars Jill and Haley support um, amazing people. Olivier came from the Cameroon, an asylum seeker, um, seeking safety um, from a situation. He spoke no English, and he had never used the internet before. He did English my way at Learn for Life and learnt some basic English, did well. He then moved on to Learn My Way and learnt the basic digital skills. Olivia had come to this country for a better life, so he then used the internet skills to then go online and search for courses, and there he is in a carpentry class at Sheffield College. Um, he wants to go on to be a dental technician, which um, amuses me slightly because I'm hoping he doesn't use those tools when he's in the <laughs> dentist. Um, but Olivier, I mean, what an amazing story. Came here with nothing, with no skills, and through the work of the Learn for Life Centre, but also with that support through digital that he could change his life in that way. Sometimes people say to me, oh, Helen, you do that kind of computer training, like in places? <laughs> And I go, 
no, not really. <laughs> because sometimes people just want to put us in a box and say, you're a single issue charity. You just stick people in, in front of a computer, give them a little bit of that online learning, and then they learn how to do an email. It's like a sheep dip. They just turn up. You know, you could just do it with an iPad at the checkout in the supermarket and just spend five minutes with them, and pow, they're all going to be fine. Yeah, some of you are nodding. You obviously also have that experience. But that's not what we do. What we do is a long journey for people to have better lives. It starts with people often coming in crisis. They've been made redundant. They've got poor health. They've got a loved one has died, and all of a sudden, they don't know how to use their online bank account. Someone in the job center has told them they have to apply for universal credit online. Those people have more than one need, and they don't just need to learn how to use the internet. And of course, that engagement has to happen in the heart of their local community. Digital skills is absolutely part of this journey. So we want people to be digitally able. But of course, it's not just about having the skills. It's being confident and independent enough to use them and to be active every day, to be applying it in a purposeful way. And of course, it's not just about digital inclusion. It's about digital equality. And of course, not just using those skills to apply for universal credit, but actually to have a better life, to be happier, to be healthier, and to be better off. So I like my big numbers. Those of you who know me know this. 2.6 million people in the last eight years. That's phenomenal. And we've achieved this together. And our goal is to help 3 million by the end of 2020. And I'm sure we're going to smash that. Ian has already mentioned the blueprint. So why would we not want 100% of the nation to be digitally included? Well, there are still some people um, who um, won't sign up to it. 100% is a big number. This blueprint is based on the report that we did with CEBR, the Centre for Economic and Business Research. That said that by 2028, if we kept going with all of the hard work that we've got and all of the investment that we've got, then actually in 2028 would only halve the problem. There would still be 6.8 million people who lack the basic digital skills we need. So we said, we're pretty good, 2.6 million in eight years, but that's not going to help 11.3 million people, is it? We've got to do it collaboratively and we've got to do it together. In here is a six-point plan. We've developed it in consultation. We've got some great logos on the end. BT have pledged their support, so theirs is coming soon. Um, Lloyd's has also pledged their support. Theirs is coming soon. But anybody here can still take part and can still pledge your support for 100% digital nation. And if you're an online centre, or even if you're just a citizen, please do write to your MP, because we have an early day motion in the House of Commons. And you can ask your MP to sign up for that. And, you can tell them about the work that you do, and you can tell them why you're passionate about making sure that everybody in your community and in the country is included. So, digital, social, global. We've had a big year. You're going to hear from Jess later um, about our work in Australia. So we now have a truly global network. If you're one of those dots on the um, network in the UK, then you're part of this global network. Uh, we've done phenomenal work in Kenya, working with the library network. And this second year of our pilot in Kenya, we're going to be extending it out to other non-library partners. And in Australia, phenomenally, the team have recruited over 2,000 partners in just over a year to be part of a digital inclusion movement in Australia, which is truly phenomenal. So, Tim Berners-Lee, the World Wide Web rock star, um, announced in Lisbon that we were approaching half of the world online. It feels incredible in our communities where we're really trying to get to those very, very, very hardest to reach people that only a half of the world is online. There's still 3.8 billion people who have never used the internet. There's Tim at the Web Summit in Lisbon um, earlier this month um, giving a presentation to over 70,000 people. If you ever thought computer science was boring, then this is where it leads you. I think he's a little bit of a reticent rock star of the internet. But he's absolutely passionate that the web needs to be 
not just for everyone, but it needs to be a safe space, it needs to be a legal space, and it needs to be an ethical space. So he's calling for a contract for the web. And of course, we believe that digital needs to be for everybody to help them to um, address those social challenges. It needs, for, needs to be for everyone to make sure that they're digitally able, active, and equal, that they're happier, healthier, and better off. And thank you, everybody here. So thank you to the online centres. Thank you to the staff of Good Things Foundation, trustees, to national partners, to future partners that I hope you all are if you're not one of those previous categories. Because every small pebble that you drop into the pond has a huge ripple, which is why we think a global movement for digital social inclusion is so important. But we can't do it without all of you. Thank you very much.